Uh, yeah, this is uh, part one of the Escape the Fate interview. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this started. Okay. I mean, you uh, might be able to hear me, but like, I have this, I have this like recorded. I mean, like, I uh, I have it on my uh, what you call it? Uh, fuck. Never mind. I'm just this is just the the uh, interview with with uh, AP. Close like oh yeah. We just step it up a notch, dude. Like just it's that, just, like, not just about it's just about the band wanting wanting to be more than just just a band. You know what I mean? Like me personally, I've definitely definitely gotten gotten into that mindset because I'm just used to wearing a t-shirt and a pair of jeans and just going up there and rocking. But it's definitely a different story when when you go out there and you you want to put on a show and we just keep on thinking of different ideas, different things we can do on stage, different ways to dress or something, and just, just make it more of like a production, more of like a concert, a show, like we can get ready and feel like we Pretty are much. on stage acting, you know, putting on a show, we're different characters on the stage than we are in real life, you know what I mean? And that's kind of what we, like what we want to get to. That's good. Like, that's a really good point. You know what I mean, like? Uh, you know what's crazy, though? Like, hey, at least he isn't saying you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, uh, well, he, he was saying, like, how he, he goes to, like, a mall or something, you know, kids recognize him. What's cool with me is I have these these glasses I'm even wearing right now in the studio where no one can see me. I'm still wearing them, but when I go out in public, I can take them off, and, you know, kids sometimes think it might be me, but it might not. So I kind of have that, that identity, and that's what we have on stage, and we can just live it up and be who we are, and, you know, kids will recognize us as soon as they see us. As opposed to that could just be their friend, you know. They know. I was kind of disappointed, Robert, because everybody that uh, I had spoken to wow. in the past year <laughs> said, said, said that you, you, I was waiting for the fur coat, and you came in here without the fur coat on. Son um, of a bitch. That fur that's, coat is, um... <laughs> what happened to that? that? That's my freaking fur coat. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, first of all, that's not my fur coat. You know what? It's your issue. I know. He can wear it on no. torch he gets a new winter jacket. He can get all that... It happens to everybody. A lot of people me out. Now everybody sees Robert with his leopard coat. Yeah. I gave you my zebra pants. What's up, dude? And everybody... That fur coat, though, the reason I'm not wearing it right now is because uh, we're going on stage and off stage, especially right now it's winter and we'll be going outside. And it's yeah, it's like 60 degrees outside yeah, today, and, yeah. And so when I wear it, when I come off stage, it's fucking sweaty and I haven't gotten a chance to yeah, wear it. So it thing, smells man. atrocious right now. Dry kill, the, dry, uh, the dry cleaner bill's got to be horrible on that thing. Oh that my thing. god. <laughs> It's Max's jacket, so I'll let him Not worry about that. <laughs> no, but it's. Uh, yeah, I wish I had that right now. <laughs> <laughs> but the, what happened was that was my jacket that my friend gave to me, and I was too big for it at the time. And uh, I gave it to Max on the basis that one day I might lose weight and be able to fit in it and you know a couple years later I did and all of a sudden he thinks it's his that entire <laughs> story is questionable and debatable <laughs> no it's not that's the end all be all that's the explanation right there it's in, it's uh, it's something to think about though and I don't know if you guys have actually discussed this or not or maybe your manager has or anybody at Epitaph Records your label has or not but there's there's that point where you guys are wanting to be yourselves and it was really interesting, Craig, that you said about, you know, look, we're here, you're, you're basically saying we're here to perform on stage. We're not out there just to hang out, you know, and this isn't band rehearsal. We have to bring a show, and uh, um, whether you like their music or not, Family Force 5 think the same way you do. Yeah. Uh, they, they're like, we got to entertain, man. Dude, I love yeah. them on the You know, people are paying 18 19 20 dollars plus to see us. Really? Them, yeah. So it's like perform, do yeah. something, yeah. look, address, do the you know people want to aspire, they want to fantasize. I want to be like that person. Yeah. You know, we always said that if if kids are gonna come see your band player or else, like they, they're gonna they're gonna pay to be entertained. If they want to listen to your music, they're gonna steal it. You know, that's like the difference. That's like so it's like you better put on a good show because they paid for that ticket. You know, you want to get them to come back. Well, that's where you make your money these days in music, not selling the music. You actually sell the show now. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's really, that's good what point. You gotta do. really good point. So you gotta sell tickets. To make so then, money. how do you prov how do you provide um, legitimacy to that? Because where cynical um, people, whether it's fans, and cynical people that run message boards of note, people that are in the media, hello, uh, you know, people that are older, uh, you know, guys and gals that have been around for a while, they'll sit there and go, uh, they'll look at a band uh, that 
um, is, uh, has, a, has an image, has a style, they're relatively new, and they'll sit there and they'll think like, alright, these guys, gals, are acting like rock stars before they're actually rock stars. So the image is created before the reputation, uh, and it is sometimes it causes critics and, and, uh, and the doubtfuls out there to kind of um, question that artist's sincerity and authenticity yeah. uh, and they're saying they're just acting this way in order to be trendy. yeah and so are they really like that yeah, or is I this an all an act I think that happens to every artist though and then those same critics that say this guy has such a rock and roll attitude I don't think he's going to go anywhere when that artist is selling multi-platinum records and they're playing arenas they're the same people that are like yeah, I saw them when they were nothing, and uh, yeah, they were pretty good. I was there. I was at that show. I, you know, I think that yeah, I think that it it, it, it kind of happens to every band, you know, a little bit, especially when they're coming out. But like the like the difference is like you can tell with some bands like, but it's all about like just watching them. Like right. okay, that okay, they're they're like they're living it, they're doing it, or whatever else. You know what I'm saying? Like um, like what were we watching last night? We were watching uh, Marilyn Manson's Guns God and Government World Tour DVD. Okay, yeah, yeah. And like going back to that, I mean, you gotta imagine how many people looked at him. Good example. And right? said he has, oh, he has too much of an attitude. Like back when he was what Marilyn Manson and the Spooky Kids. I mean, how many right. people saw that and was like, look at this douchebag. And there were. You're, 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 you're entirely right. Yeah, there were now there he's tons of critics back then saying look everyone. At this act. Yeah. There's nobody that would talk bad about Manson now because he's just. He's his own entity, he's you know what I mean? He's an artist. <laughs> right, 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 right. He is a good artist, though, but... Yeah. You know, so, that's just an example of, like, how critics probably were all over his, his jock, you know, back in the day. And he just stuck with it, and at the end of the day, he's doing what he loves to do, and he's making music for people that want to hear it. And I think everybody just kind of got over the fact that, you know what, he's just an artist doing what he loves. Mm-hmm. I gotta respect that. Mm-hmm. I, I, think, well, I, think, I think at the end of the day, you gotta do what feels right to you and not give a fuck you know because it's like if if that's the way you want to present yourself if you want to be a fucking arrogant asshole then that's and that's your thing <laughs> fucking run with it and maybe it'll work <laughs> but like if you want to put on a show and cause controversy like like he said like manson did then you know what that that's what he likes to do he le- like look at his song titles of some you know some, right right and like that's what he likes videos to do. Yeah. yeah he likes to cause controversy and that's what made him famous, and that's what he ran with, you know, and that's, that, that's been that way since the beginning with us, like, there's nothing fake about what we're doing, this is who we are, but it's like, it, at the same time, it just, when, when you put it on a stage, it becomes really interesting, you know? Yeah. So. It's interesting, though, because it, with the with the records that, he, uh, and of course, it's a difference, I mean, obvious difference with the, with the different lead singer at the time, um, but the records that you did with Basket, Basket? How do you pronounce his last name? Basket. Basket is Basket, so it's... <laughs> um, uh, but the two records with that were, were obviously more of kind of like that Molly Crew kind of Van Halen era kind of thing. And then the new one with Feldman is obviously, especially when you got um, Harder Than You Know on there, uh, the ballad, uh, which, I mean, I listened to the record, I'm like, wow, that's really good. And all of a sudden it hit that la- the second to last song, right? And then uh, I was like, whoa, this is different. Didn't yeah. expect this, but then I went Feldman. Uh, of course, um, and uh, that's how John is. He yeah. just, you know, he believes in, in uh, you know, he, he, Basket. He's worked with Incubus and Limp Bizkit, and, and uh, you know, and uh, he, he's he's got really got a rock and roll kind of mentality to him. And Feldman, it's about the hit. Yeah. He's about presenting an overall package that is um, uh, is is uh, sellable to a, a lot of people. Yeah. You know, from radio to uh, you know the the teenage girl in high school uh, that's going through heartbreak or whatever, or the guy. And um, so, it, it, how with with that kind of an image? Like, what's it's obviously even the videos they're more tamed down, the more uh, so like. But you're trying to still be. You're, you're kind of talking like, well, we're going to be, you know, uh, what we want to be, and that would still kind of point towards how you guys were prior to. Craig, your, yeah. your position in the band. I mean, is there kind of like a difference now where you're also trying to change? You're, maybe you're kind of sensing like, okay, maybe we got to scale back a little bit the way that we, that show on yeah. stage, you know, we don't have to like be too over the top anymore. Right. We can pull it back. Because yeah. yeah. if you're watching YouTube videos of the earlier shows, uh, when Ronnie was in there, it was definitely like, that was, you know, it was Van Halen's opening act. Yeah. Um, you know, I know, as far as, as far as the music, like I said the other night, Craig jumped off a balcony and showed this dude his ass, so I think I oh, think it's still pretty fucking rad. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're more yeah, I don't think we're I don't think we're going to sign the Shutterfuck on. The shows are definitely way more up there. Um, 
I I personally hate both our music videos that we have out right now. Just, really? That you know what? Just for personal right. reasons, because we filmed both of them.